Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Andrew Rant's video series where I stand upon my metaphorical soapbox pedestal of the world and I bitch complain about things that annoy me, bother me, and just plain piss me right the hell off. And today I'm finally tackling a topic that honestly I'm amazed I haven't touched yet. Yeah, I've wanted to, I've thought about it, I've contemplated it, but I'm amazed that I haven't actually sat down and done it. Well, I'm doing it today, so <laughs> time to go off on it. That's right, because today I am ranting about VPNs, or Virtual Private Networks. Now, for those of you that don't know what these are, let me explain. They're basically a service that claims that they will encrypt your data and protect it from your ISP and from the rest of the internet. You may have seen a lot of ads for these from some videos on YouTube and some other YouTubers who have gotten brand deals with like NordVPN, ExpressVPN, um, half a dozen other ones, but what the fuck is a VPN? Well, it's a virtual private network, and it supposedly allows you to encrypt your data, keeping it safe from hackers, thieves, and everybody else. It's basically like an RF shield for your life online. It supposedly allows you to have faster speed, uh, better you know access, and the thing that they keep selling you on is it supposedly allows you to access content that's geo-restricted. Now, what in the hell you're asking is geo-restricted mean? Well, geo-restricted basically means that you can't watch it where you are. Like, take me, for example. I live in the U.S. If I want to watch an anime series that's specifically set to Japan and it's up on YouTube, but YouTube says it's blocked in my country, if I had, like, ExpressVPN or NordVPN, I could set my ISP to something over in Japan, and it supposedly tricks the system into realizing that I'm in Japan when I'm actually not, and thus allows me to watch the geo-restricted content. Yes, that's apparently what it does. And I have had my reservations about this for a while, especially for the fact that they're charging you a monthly fee on top of what you're already having to pay for internet. Now, I pay about $70 a month, but that's for the phone and internet. Now, we still have a landline phone. We have it for emergencies only. Like, you know, because we actually, honestly, we found out that in the midst of a, like, storm or something, if the power goes out, our phone, our cell phones are virtually worthless because the cell tower in the area just gets no signal at all so it's nice having a landline phone that we can use for emergencies just in case we need it which is the one thing i kind of think everybody should still have and use yet is your landline phone just in case you need it for emergencies and and honestly it's be like 30 dollars i think is what we pay for it and then the internet tacked on top of that's another like 34 bucks so it comes up to about 70 dollars with the taxes and the fees it comes up to about 70 bucks which is fine figure I get internet and we have a backup phone just in case. So yeah, I'm more than willing to pay that because that I kind of feel like is a necessity in life. You need to have some type of communication. So yeah, I don't really consider the internet a luxury. I consider that a form of communication and the phone is literally a, oh shit, we're screwed backup, which is fine. Now here's my thing. And I want to stress this. With a VPN, it's total bullshit. It, the BS meters on this should be red flagging immediately. They should be redlining, but they don't because of how they pitch it so well. Now, for those of you out there wondering how exactly they do this, let me pull up here on my handy-dandy uh, system with my crack research team. I call them the Google. Let me pull up a VPN. Uh here we go. Now, somebody out there is going to go, but aren't there free ones? Well, yes and no. There are free trials. The problem is they don't actually do much of anything. Yeah, they, they don't. In fact, you can literally go to ones that claim they're free and it's free for like 30 days. It'll be free for like X amount of weeks because you still need to... Oh, sorry about that. I have hiccups this morning. You still need to pay uh, in fact, we, I'm looking at NordVPN right now, and you pull up their pricing information. 
Now, you have a two-year plan on here that's $3.30 per month as of the time of this recording. A one-month plan is $11.95, and a one-year plan is $4.92 a month. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people will use these, and they're getting, like, a lot of massive endorsements from, like, high-end celebrities, like high-end YouTubers, like Felix, a.k.a. PewDiePie, which, honestly, his credibility is shot. 109 million subscribers, my ass. But still, you have people like that, and I know, like, ExpressVPN has a bunch. Uh, I know the Angry Video Game Nerd uh, pitches a couple every now and then in his videos because they're sponsoring the videos. So, of course, they have to do this. They have to give their thoughts on this. They have to, and they have to be, you know, what they want them to say. Like, you can't up and say, oh, here, uh, I, you know, I really don't like this service. I don't really use it that much. But no, you can't say that because if you do, duh, that's a problem. And a lot of VPNs, uh, they, they, they will charge you. I don't think there's like any of them that are actually free. Uh, cause they, yeah, they, they still have to charge you. Uh, there's one here. It's called uh, OpenVPN. Uh, it's saying, is it free? The OpenVPN open source uh, project is free to use if you keep the software license agreement. But the commercial OpenVPN access server product sold by OpenVPN Incorporated is not free. Yeah, because you still have to pay. And that's the thing. You still need to pay. You just can't go and say, oh, hey, I want to get this... Uh, no, I, I want to do this. No, it doesn't work like that. And it doesn't do anything that it promises because you're still going to get throttled with speed. And a lot of places, because uh, if you've ever seen Anime Abandoned, uh, Bennett the Sage, when he was going over to Italy to be with his fiance the first time, so it would have been a couple of years ago, he had made a comment. That he moved over there now. Uh, but he had made a comment that a lot of the series that he's watching, he can't get over there because they're not set up. It's not available over there. And VPN services are starting to get found out for this. Here, we're going to use the quote the devil ISP masking to go from here to here and pretend that you're over here when you're sitting on your couch over here. And they're blocking a lot of that from happening. And a lot of the time, especially when you see, like, the angry video game nerds, he's like, oh, well, I'm watching, you know, I, like, I want to watch this, but unfortunately, I can't watch this because it's not available here in the U.S., but I just sent my ISP to, like, let's say London, and it's over there, no problem. And, yeah, while that works for certain things, other places are starting to catch wind of this, and they are putting an end to it. Now, I know a lot of people out there are going to go, but Andrew... You do realize you're talking out of your ass. I mean, I have a VPN. It works wonderful. Yeah, that's fine. It can work for some people, but a lot of what they're claiming is total bullshit. And you might get lucky. And a lot of the times, too, like you're going to say, but it works for them. Yeah, they're being sponsored by them, which means that, okay, they're having to pay for the service, but they're getting high-end treatment of the service. Like, they're getting top speed. They're getting the faster bandwidth because they're the spokesperson for the service. And they're th they're thinking that everybody's going to get what they're getting when in actuality, they're not. The internet does not function as this massive, you know, open world like everybody believes it does. And it's sad but true. When it comes to the internet, this is what it is. And I, this is the part that pisses me off that VPNs just keep you know, tricking people. They keep making it seem like it's this wonderful tunnel that you can just go down this tunnel and we protect all your stuff. Your stuff is still vulnerable. They have access to it. It's not that, oh, well, now this company and this company can't get it. Yeah, that's kind of true. But the sad part is the VPN has access to it. And how do you think they keep themselves afloat? It's $7 a month. Even if you get like a crap ton of people, you'd have to have at least like 15,000 people just to maybe break even 
depending on how much service and stuff is used and how much electricity is being pissed out of this to keep your servers running, to keep everything moving, you're going to have to have a bunch of people to break even and even start making a profit. So they're going to be selling your data. The only problem is they're selling it basically in a closed auction. Now, for those of you that don't know how this works, and I know this is kind of getting more into like a discussion, but I'm so pissed about it because people are falling for this goddamn thing. Here's how this works. When you regularly surf the internet, yes, your information is vulnerable, your ISP and everything else. And a majority of the time, ads are targeted towards you. Think of this as like a massive auction, like a massive public auction. You have the ISPs now like taking offers from who wants to try to sell, you know, my user some information, you know, who wants to sell some shit to my user, and then they're going for, you know, like, the highest bidder, and that person will win out, so it's basically whichever service, you know, buys the information from you, in this case, it's your ISP that's selling it, so they're going, okay, uh, I have some information here on Andrew, uh, who wants to, uh, who wants to sell Andrew a car? Okay, open up the bidding here at uh, 50 bucks. Do I have 50, 50, 50, 50 dollars? I have 50 over here. Uh, do I have 70? 70 over here from Carfax. Do I have 1,000? 1,000! Holy crap! 2,000 in the back! In the back from CarMax! Uh, anybody want to top that? Gone once. Gone twice. Sold! And that's how that kind of works. Because it's whatever you're searching for, they'll target ads toward that, towards that to trick you. And that's how they're selling your information because it's like, well, now they'll target this ad towards you so that they'll try to trick you into buying, you know, their product. Now, it doesn't always work unless you're really gullible. I mean, I almost fell for it once. And I did have a friend that fell for an obvious phone scam, so obviously she'd fall for it. But still, that's how it regularly works on the internet. With a VPN... It's the same functionality, just in this case, instead of it being like a public auction, it think of it more like Sotheby's. Yeah. A private auction. Only in this case, it's the creme de la creme, the high echelon of the crowd. They're the ones that are now bidding. Because now it's like, who wants to try to sell this person faster internet speed at $600 a month? I'll take a bit in that. Yeah, and that's how this works, is that your information's still being sold. It's still going out there. It, the VPN does not protect it. it. It's not doing squat. Oh, but you get faster speed. Eh, yes, but it's capped. Uh, there is a VPN that allows you to have like a bit for free it's a iobit vpn there they have a vpn thing i did try it is there was a free trial but it caps you with the free trial anyway like 250 to 700 megabytes and when i was reading what it would cost to like for if you would actually pay for it you only get like maybe one to two gigs you know max they limit you and throttle your data once you hit that throttling point that's where the extra charges are going to start coming in. You're basically paying for another provider for your internet access on top of your internet provider. So, like, let's say you have Verizon, and you're paying Verizon X amount of money a month for the, whatever internet speed you get from Verizon. I get the cheapest one they have because that's what I can afford. So... You get that from Verizon. Now, you have, let's say, NordVPN or ExpressVPN. Now, you're not only paying Verizon, you're also paying Nord or Express for their service on top of Verizon for your internet. And the thing is, they're both doing the same thing, only the one's going to overcharge you once you hit a certain data cap. Oh, but I get the faster speed. Yeah, here's a news flash for you. You can actually Google search ways to increase your internet speed by changing your domain name server or DNS server, by changing and lowering the ping from your modem to whatever the server is you're connecting to. If you lower the ping, it does go faster. In fact, there are programs out there that can help with that, and they're free and open source. There's YouTube videos explaining how to lower your ping. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do that will literally cost you nothing to do. You're literally just like, oh, well, no, it costs you nothing. It, it literally costs you nothing. That's the thing. It costs you nothing. But in the grand scheme of things, yes, it does get a bit overtaxing. Now, 
of course, I want to stress something. Because I know somebody's going to go, but Andrew, v you know, DNS servers, they can't be free, right? Well, here's the thing. A lot of DNS servers kind of are. There are public ones that everybody's allowed to use. Now, there are some that are most that are always out there um, for, like, the high-end popular ones. And there are sites that you can pull up, you know, to show you these. And there are, like, the best free and public ones. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them. Now, does that mean um, that they're all free? Well, probably not, but you don't know all the time. So most domain uh, registrars uh, provide free DNS with domain name registries. Uh, free name servers cover the basic needs of the website, including limited configuration features and less impressive SLA. Uh, paid DNS costs a few dollars a month for better website performance and everything else. But that's like for, you know, your thing. But if you want to use one, I don't know. Because, like I said, you can literally just pull up, you know, the best free public DNS servers. But the thing is that a lot of people do kind of do this. So those aren't really going to be giving you the most speed. Like Cloudflare, that's one that a lot of people really do uh, go to because they came out as like, hey, we're really fast, we're really powerful. Yeah, that does make a difference. Uh, you know, you do get uh, certain things. But... Are there, like, you know, differences? I don't know. Because this is the one thing that I really don't know everything about. Now, a majority of DNS servers, sometimes your ISP will literally connect you to one. And you really won't have much of a say in it. Because it's whatever one they want to connect you to. So, a majority of the time, it's no. But, a majority of the time, it's also yes. They are free. Why? I don't know. Uh, you have like Open DNS. You have a whole bunch of them. There's like an entire list you can literally go to. And I'm serious on this. Uh, you can literally go to this, uh, to like a bunch of things. Just literally look in. Uh, yeah. You can literally just go to them and it's like, hey, what do I need to do? Uh, you know, like, what's the fastest DNS? And there's like a whole bunch that you can like. Find there's some programs that you can pull up. Uh, how can you find the fastest one out there? There's like some programs you can get um, that you can do, and you can check out there's a bunch of like freeware and stuff that's helpful and everything else. It's just a matter of figuring it out. But that's for DNS servers. But we're talking VPNs, and VPNs. What pisses me off is that people will literally look at this and they're falling for this obvious scam, and they're still falling for it. Because every celebrity is like, oh, well, it's a virtual private network. It's literally, and I want to say this, okay? It is security theater. That is what it is. They're still getting your information. They're still buying your information. It's just now a private auction instead of a public auction. That's all it is. There's no difference from what it was beforehand to what it is now. It's still the same thing. The problem is you're now having to pay an extra fee to use a service that's basically doing what the other one was already doing. It boggles my mind. But it doesn't do, they, ne they will never do what they're claiming to do. Oh, you get faster speed till you hit the limit. Then you're going to get charged, th then you're going to get charged extra. Watch, because there'll be like hidden fees and charges. Everything has hidden fees in it. Every single thing. You transfer money, there's a hidden fee. You transfer, you know, data, there's a hidden fee. Look at your cell phone bill. There's fees, charges, and taxes. You can look at the, something like an ad and it says it's $99.99. There's tax and other things involved that bring that price higher than $99.99. Especially when you see like ads for, hey, look, this phone's only one dollar. Yeah, there's a catch because you need to buy a phone plan. That's usually about seventy to eighty dollars a month. That's where the catch is. Then on top of that, you need to pay the unlock fee. You need to pay, you know, the cert, you know, the first time use fee. There's a whole slew of extra charges. So that one dollar phone is now costing about two hundred dollars. 
Yeah. Do you see my point here? And this is still with VP fucking ends. Hopefully people understand this, but I get it. Nobody's going to get it. Nobody's going to care. But still, it bothers the hell out of me that you people are falling for this yet. But I digress. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Have you used the VPN? Have you ever had any problems? Did you get over the charge and you didn't realize it? Let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been Andrew Rance.